Welcome to the Google Workspace Developer News, where we share what's new to the Google Workspace platform. We have 14 topics to cover, so let's get started. You can now import data from your other messaging platforms into Google Chat. To import user data, you can create a chat app and import mode chat space. In import mode spaces, chat apps can import existing messages, attachments, reactions, memberships, and space entities from other platforms into equivalent REST resources. You can now migrate historical memberships when you import data into Google Chat. Historical memberships are memberships created for users who had already left the original space entity from the source messaging platform, but you want to retain their data in chat. While the space is in import mode, you can import those historical memberships into the space using the create method on the membership resource. Chat apps can now send messages privately in spaces with multiple people. A private message is a chat app message that's only visible to a specified chat user. You can use private messages in spaces with multiple people so that they can interact privately with chat apps. Check out the video, Send Private Messages as a Google Chat App, linked in the description to learn more about this feature. Chat apps can now add interactive buttons to the bottom of messages. The following example shows a chat app that uses accessory widgets, thumbs up and thumbs down buttons in a text message. The Google Workspace Events API now supports subscriptions to Google Chat users. Subscriptions to chat users support the following event types. New memberships, updated memberships, deleted memberships, multiple memberships have changed. The Google Workspace Events API now sends lifecycle events when subscriptions expire. The API permanently deletes expired subscriptions. If your subscription expires, you can use the subscriptions.create method to create another subscription. The Google Workspace Events API supports the get method on the operations resource. The operation resource represents a long running operation that is the result of a network API call. With the get method, clients can pull the operation results at intervals as recommended by the API service. Google Workspace add-ons now support link previews in Google Sheets and Slides. In contrast to Google Docs, third-party smart chips aren't supported for link previews in Sheets and Slides. When users type or paste a URL into a spreadsheet or presentation, Sheets or Slides prompts them to replace the link with its title as linked text instead of a chip. When the user hovers over the link title, they see a card interface that previews information about the link. Google Workspace add-ons now support third-party resource creation from the app menu in Google Docs. You can use this feature to let users create resources in your service through a form dialog in Docs. This is useful for when you want your users to be able to create resources, such as a support case or project task, in a third-party service from within Google Docs. The URL to the resource is automatically inserted in the document after creation. To help you get started with this feature, we have put together a code sample linked in the description below. The storage limits for drive files and folders have been updated. Each user can own up to 500 million items in their account. When the limit is reached, the user can no longer create or upload items in Drive. Attempts to add more than 500 million items returns an active item creation limit exceeded HTTP status code response. The Google Drive API version 3 now enables you to get a list of the user's installed apps with information about each app's supported MIME types, file extensions, and other details. Using the list method on the resource apps, you can retrieve all of a user's installed apps, including the corresponding app IDs. Then you can use the get method and the app ID to get more information about a specific app a user has installed. On the reports API, the event returned in the activities.watch method payload is now filtered to the event name set in the filter. Before this change, multiple events were returned in the payload even if the customer filtered to a specific event. Google Chrome and other browsers have begun phasing out third-party cookies to better protect user privacy. Chrome has restricted third-party cookies for 1% of users from January 4th, 2024. For more details on how to prepare, provide feedback, and report potential site issues, check the link in the description. We also made quite a few improvements to our technical documentation. I'm listing them here for your reference. I'm also adding references in the video description in case you are interested to learn more. Let us know in the comment section below. Which new feature are you most excited about trying out?
Make sure to subscribe to this YouTube channel so that you stay up to date with all things Google Workspace platform related.